through looking at other people's work. There was a guy, Steve Olds, was the original production designer at Oddworld. He was completely self-taught, and to this day, he's one of the best production designers I've ever worked with in my life. He was self-taught, but he had discipline. Astounding, relentless discipline. And that's, you know, if you're gonna be self-taught, you can do it, and you can be the best by being self-taught, but you have to have great discipline. And well, so let's talk about the creation of like the odd world universe, its lore, its creatures. How did all that uh, get started? <laughs> In a very back back ass kind of way, you know, backward ass kind of way, like the way you shouldn't do it. So I wouldn't present this as advice to anyone. Uh, the, the way I was doing it was uh, I had an amazing production designer at the time. His name is Stephen Olds. And he's still out there. I think he's the last thing he's been working on. Is, uh, he's been at, at uh, Rockstar for games, I think, working on uh, Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. oh. But Steve was an incredibly disciplined uh, production designer. I mean, he was, he was the type of guy that he would just do one stroke with a pencil in one, like, weird shaped way with his hand and it and it would go away and you'd be like, My God, that's a forearm beautifully rendered, you know, he just you hated him. He was just that good, you know. And uh so I was so impressed with Steve, I was like, design some really cool creatures, man, and let's see what we can figure out. So it was completely backward ass, right? And what you should be doing in games is you should be saying, well, you know, this is the flying creature that's going to come at you, you know, three times before he powers up and, and becomes an end boss or whatever. You know, I'm oversimplifying, but I, I think you get the essence of it. Yeah. And in our case, we were saying inspire us with really cool, weird shit. And uh, Steve was great at that. And so he came back. He ultimately designed Paramites and Scrabs and Gluckins and Ape. Uh, and then, you know, uh, as a director, I would be giving him my, um, <laughs> you know, my pain in the ass feedback because I'd be like, that's not the Abe I want to see. And uh, we'd have lots of arguments over that stuff. But oftentimes in the first Oddworld, we were, we were looking at character designs and saying, how do we turn this into a mechanic? Which is really the wrong way to do it, you know. But uh, that's how we did it. And so we were like, paramites, you know, how do we turn that into to a behavior that uh, feels like a living life form? So a lot of it was driven by the idea, you know, I was, I was being driven by the idea of some of the coolest moments in life was like encountering, you know, a dog that was just about to attack you. I mean, it sounds uh, kind of messed up, but it would be really an intuitive figure, a, a very charged, exciting, intuitive experience to try and figure out, you know, how do I not get attacked by this dog? that looks very scary at this moment uh, or, you know, encountering wild animals, you know, in the woods. <laughs> and that would drive uh, on top of that, like, oh, Paramites. And it was a designer, Paul O'Connor, who later went on to uh, co-found uh, High, Moon, High Moon Studios. And he would say, well, yeah, he would come back to me with these different ratios of, of what we thought could be AI behaviors. And then we'd pick and choose through that. So like I said, it was a really backward-ass design process. We know we wanted creatures we wanted to interact with, but we wanted to see really cool creatures first before we figured out how they would work. And, uh, and like I said, you shouldn't do it that way. <laughs> the, well, were there any creatures that you couldn't get to work? Yeah, we had a few, you know. Uh, but largely, I think um, some of them were just... Uh, I think we couldn't figure out, you know, we wanted them, but they were so cool, but we couldn't figure out uh, how to make sense of it. And then others were just, you know, time and money and budget.